Hi there, this is Kawa. So today's topic is going to be about gaining battle power. It's been brought to my attention that a lot of people don't seem to know how to do it. Not in the sense that, you know, they don't know how to power up. It's just that they're doing it either not efficiently or there's always some general reason why they can't do it. And I just want to touch in on some of that. So, first things first, I'm going to have to say it. I say it all the time to people on my server. Uh, don't know how people listen, but I'm going to say it all the time. Ninjas are not the most important thing in the game. Battle power is. People just can't seem to grasp that. Yes, there are some ninjas who are so backbreaking that it's ridiculous when you face them. But at the same time, they are only as strong as you are. I can give a Susano Itachi to a 120k person. It doesn't mean they're going to be able to beat me because they have Susano Itachi. I can even give them Edo Hashirama and like Edo Minato. Doesn't change the fact that I tower over them with battle power. I have already shown to everybody that I can get away with playing with like vanilla Sasuke's and you know vanilla Tsunade's. Units that everybody has access to. And I can only get away with it because I have this battle power. So we're going to touch in on that. Because a lot of people like to make the excuse that oh I can't afford these expensive ninjas so therefore I can never win. So that's a myth first of all. You can't you don't need expensive ninjas to win battles. They help, but you absolutely have to have battle power. Expensive ninjas on their, no on their own do not get you anywhere. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen that. So, the other myth that I like to hear a lot, well, not that I like to hear, I hear a lot, is, oh, you're a whale. You don't understand the plights of a weaker player. Well, that's not exactly true, seeing at one point I was at the same weak power level like everyone else. It's just that I focused on power options. And then you know what? After I got to a certain threshold, it just kind of didn't make sense for me to keep buying power options. So, you know, I just cruised around by picking up ninjas. So, another thing is the definition of what a whale is it differs for everyone for some reason because what is constituted as a whale in my definition is anyone who spends a lot of money on this game which is usually the general um, definition but they also have to have above baseline power there are people who say people who are at a 160k power is a whale. That is so far from the truth. See, 160k is not even hard to reach these days. People who are whales easily go over 240k right now. Easily. With a few exceptions of people who break the original idea of not going for power but going for ninjas. Those people could easily be whales still, but they're more ninja collectors than they are uh, PvP players. So, the first thing that we have to touch on when gaining power is you have to recognize where you fall in on the scale. If you're a free-to-play player, you can't slack. That's the first thing. And then you also have to figure out what your average BP is on, is on your server. Uh, as every server is different, I can't give you exact numbers. That's something you have to figure out on your own. And there's no concrete number. It's something you just judge. I can tell you for S2, the average power level here, bare minimum, is 120k. 
and I can tell you that because I can just pop rankings, scroll to the bottom, and look at this. At 100th, strongest person on the server, is 105k. Okay, so if I go up to like about right here at 70, well 69, but this person here is short 400, so we'll say 69, 70, is 120k. Um, I can tell you, I'm pretty sure these are not heavy spenders of any sorts. And 120k is something really easy to gain. And what I will consider is the average on S2. If you cannot hit 120k, you're clearly doing something wrong on S2. And... There should be no reason why you can't do it outside of the fact that if you're a completely new player then you know there's your excuse you're a completely new player you just started the game um you don't have the resources yet but we'll touch in on the things that you should probably be doing so don't forget you need to know what your server's average power is and at least try to match it as well as you can ignore the people at the top us at the top here we're clearly whales. We we do not factor in into the server's average. You never look at what we are. So you scroll down. You want to hit like a midway point. 50 might still be a little high because we're on S2. That's why I use 70 to gauge it. Other servers, you might go a little lower. Maybe to 80, 90 to gauge it. Depending how many spenders you have. But you could get the general gist of what is... The bare minimum that you should be at at this time so the reason why I always say that it makes no sense that people cannot hit this average is because with the introduction of the grocery storage room this nice little shop here you get a weekly amount of free items to boost your power it doesn't cost you anything you just have to play the game. It's not asking for a lot. You're supposed to be able to get 5,800 sun coins and 68,000 moon coins. I hit this cap on Tuesdays. Like, right after the thing resets. Because I hold on to some of my coins throughout the week because I already hit the cap early. So, we could touch in on that later. But, I do know... Sometimes hitting this number is hard for people because you might not be able to win every Sage Row battlefield. You might not place even. But you know what? There's a lot of options. Just because you can't do one doesn't mean you should completely stop doing it. If you're free to play, you have to use every resource slash asset you can get. And every Sun Coin counts. Also, hitting that nice cap gives you a nice little boost here. It gives you a 75 ninjutsu and 75 life. That's pretty good. And you only have to hit 5,000 sun coins, which is not that hard, really, because there's so many things you can do. I'm not going to touch in on all the things that you can do to get these coins. That's something you should probably know on your own. But you should definitely do Sage Row Battlefield. You should definitely do uh, Nine Tails. You should definitely do the Fighting Masuri. And, well, cat quiz too, because that doesn't require anything from you. I personally just stand on one place with one answer and just collect whatever. Uh, this new function, the 3v3 arena, you only have to win three times. And it gives you a good amount of moon coins. Does not require much effort out of you. And you should do the uh, training field, that other new event. It gives quite a lot of moon coins if I remember correctly it gives sun coins too and it's a more friendly sage world battlefield you don't you don't get eliminated and you can just hang out at the lower floors fighting people who are weak or well, I'm not going to say weaker but I'm going to say at your same power level because people who are stronger is going to ascend the tower relatively quick we usually just can't stay at the top floor if you can't you know play with the big boys, stay in the lower floors. It's really simple. 
So with the grocery store, I'm just going to quickly touch in on what you should buy and what you should not be buying. So here, starting with sun coins. Obvious things you do not buy. You do not need to seal scroll, you don't need to summon scroll, and you definitely do not need the ability treasure scrolls. Uh, what is this thing? Uh, charm packs? Ignore the charm pack, it's 500 coins. Too expensive. For one. It's... You can get them other ways. I know people consider the advanced refines, but I would not suggest it at all, seeing about as you need quite a lot of them. And I will explain that one in a little bit. Uh, Magatamas? Absolutely not. Uh, even the Rainbow one? Absolutely not. You can get those from your uh, ninja exams every day. <laughs> you don't not need to buy these. These are relatively free. The thing that you should be buying is these nice bond scrolls here. Seeing as they give a pretty decent boost to your power. Oh, someone decided to attack me for some reason. Uh, let me deal with them real quick. Oh, God damn it. I probably should just hide out in the group's headquarters so nobody can attack me randomly. Okay, um, what was I talking about? Ah, uh, yes. Um, yeah, so here, you want these bond scrolls. Definitely, you pick up the scroll, obviously, the one that you're leveling up at the time. Um, so, obviously, if you're picking up the bond scrolls, you're gonna need the bells. Pick up the bells. I do not suggest picking up these threads, at least not right away. They don't give much power. Uh, these advanced cloths and stuff, please do not buy them. These are completely worthless. Uh, refines, I would probably say no. Seeing as the same with the advanced refines, you need a lot of them. And there's other sources for these. Uh, if you need this outfit, definitely pick it up as soon as you can, because you only need 50 frags for an outfit, and it's permanent power. You don't need anything for it. Uh, everything else here is relatively not useful, with the exception of the Mount Miyaboku gift and the Unbound Runes, but your priority should be the bells. Pick up the bells. And with your excess coins they turn into these mysterious um, strange stones uh, pick up the outfit if you don't have them and the only other thing you would probably pick up in here would be the mood scrolls there's nothing worth anything in here maybe a, if you really want to tune an experience trial but just pick up the mood scroll <laughs> the, so touching in on the assist links, which is the bonds, you're going to want to get four level nines as soon as you can and stack it onto your move one. And I know a lot of people like to ask, which ones should I level? That's a tricky question, seeing I don't know what units you're using, and you should upgrade them accordingly. Uh, the safe bets are always Naruto. Naruto always gives 120% to 90% of the people <laughs> on this. Uh, with the exception of obviously the villains such as uh, the Akatsuki members. Uh, another good one will be Sasuke. Sasuke is a Konoha member, main cast, so he is about 120 most of the time. And you usually just want to pick uh, the Konoha members, seeing as most teams do consist of Konoha people. Uh, and if you're playing with like Angel Conan, uh, Jiraiya is a good choice, and then you also have Naruto, this will easily give you 240%, and you just gotta find the remaining 120, which is not that hard to find. Um, another person that you should work on will be Orochimaru. He ties in with the Konoha members, the Akatsuki members, and uh, his own sound ninja people. 
uh, I have him at level 7, working on him. I'll probably get him on Monday to level 8. Uh, also, another unit that's really good is Gara. Gara links up with Naruto pretty nicely, and he's also a Jin Chiriki, who other Jin Chirikis link up with, because they don't really link up with much. Um, like Roshi and um, they don't really link up with much people, but they still get at least 100% with a fellow Jin Chiriki member. Uh, another good one to do is probably Killer B. Killer B links up with Naruto relatively nicely, and he himself is also a Jinchuriki. Uh, do not do Madara unless you absolutely have to, because he does not link up with a lot of people. He does like, I think, 80 or 100% with Akatsuki people, and like Hashirama and other, like I guess, uh, Uchiha members, but he's relatively not that good to link up with people. For Akatsuki, Specific Conan is very good. She links up all of them. Uh, I do not suggest doing any of the pains, seeing they do not link up nicely with anyone else except for themselves and Akatsuki members. Uh, so, using Kidan as a look here. See, Akatsuki members are really picky. They only link up with each other and Madara. And everyone else is just like 50%. It's really bad. So I really hate leveling up people for them. And I try my best to avoid it. Konoha members are relatively simple. They all link up with each other. Some obviously higher percent than others. So to quickly explain how this works, which I hope most of my viewers know how this works already, you need these bond levels to go up, which is this number right here. And you get this nice total degrees here. You need to hit at least level 30 with your four cards and hit a total degree link of at least 30, 360% to get uh, these added bonuses. It's an extra 40% on top of whatever they're currently giving you. And it's no joke the amount that they give you. It's quite a lot of stats. This is why this is primarily the best thing to pick up right now in your store. Uh, definitely do at least move one first. Um, worry about two, three, and four uh, later, or at least weigh it against your refines. So we'll touch in on the refines right now. As for refines, uh, since 1.0, I have been doing it in a very specific manner. Uh, I'm not sure does everyone know about how to do it this way, but this is how I do it. And majority of the Uchiha members in my group here know how to do it. So, the way that we do it here is we level up our refines up to level 7. And it stays at level 7 until I can collect enough of these advanced refines. Mathematically speaking, you will need 1,300 at the absolute most to push from level 7 to level 10 in one go during a rebate session. The reason we do it this way is during the rebate session, we get wish credits, which amount to about 300, 400, I think? I don't remember anymore. Uh, wish credits if we push from 7 to 10. And you have to use it during the event period. If not, you lose it. So it's, imagine losing 300 or 400 advanced refines for no reason. This is why once you hit level 7, you do not do them one level at a time. You are losing wish credits. It is not worth it. If you already did it, leave those to be worked on last then. Don't force it until you absolutely have to. Leave it at 7 and push to 10 all in one go. 1,300 is the maximum amount you need to save up before going for it because that is the amount you would need including wish credits assuming it takes the maximum amount to level up each time on each one of the levels. You usually should be able to do it about 1,100-ish 
around that area. Just to be safe, you probably should do one as a 100. That's what I usually do. And just store up, store up, store up, and then go for it all at once. Because realistically, you don't gain that much per level here. You gain 60. 65? It's not that much. It's really not that much stature gaining here. And it's a it's a long mission to save up all these advanced refines, seeing you really only get them from Stage 1 Battlefield or you have to buy them. And I personally never buy them unless in the event the Sage Treasure, I score it at 40% off. And then, hey, <laughs> it doesn't cost much, so I just buy all 100 all at once. But, yeah. Do it this method, it'll save you a lot of wish credits. You'll be a little bit weaker for a longer period of time, but in the long run, you do save a lot of advanced refines. It's also why I only have, what is this, one, two, three, five. I only have eight completed. Uh, you don't have to do the same with charms. Charms, just shove them in during a rebate. The rebate's at a thousand right now, so try to do the full rebate if you can. If you cannot, do at least 500. If you can't do the five, don't do it at all, because then you're losing out on the rebate. It's all about rebates this game, especially when you're free to play. You need these rebates. So the next thing that gives a lot of power is the Mount Miyaboku. Don't skimp out on this. If you see a deal where these things are cheap, pick them up. But eh, when you get to like map 14, it's really, really expensive. Look, it takes me 281 to go up one, one spot. But the return is, it gives about two to 300 power to me. But at my level, two to 300 is not much. But I also have these diminishing returns because I'm so high on power that it's hard for me to even get power effectively. So the other thing that you have to do is work on your Sage tools. I personally did my move one always first, max this out, then worry about the rest. Currently working at my move twos. So here's the thing. For these, you should always pick at least three ropes. You want at least three. The reason why is the rope is the only one that gives you both crit and injury your two most important stats when dealing damage. Also, it helps reduce damage when, you know, when you get crit, it hurts a lot. So, you should want at least three ropes. The last one usually is either A, a gourd for defense, which you give to your support, or you can just pick a rope again because it does the same exact thing. I prefer four ropes because crit and injury matter that much to me. Focus on your move one first, then worry about the rest. Uh, for the rest of them, if you pick up like those little common orbs, because I think at like level three they're not worth anything anymore, you can put those into your other ones and you know put some stats on it. But all your purples and gold essences, absolutely shove them into your move one until it's done. It's a long journey, but you absolutely need to do it. So, I'm always telling people that you have to buff your move one. And it's a really simple concept. Look, my move one here is 107k by herself. And let's compare it to a move three. He's 54k. He's like half my move one's power. And the reasoning is, in this game, the move one is the most important versus spreading your power. Because... What is stronger? One 107k or the or four 27ks fighting me? It that's the simple simple analogy I can give. At one 100k person, I can easily just kill four 27k people with like one skill. So you want to condense all your power into this one. You have one main attacker and your three other people are supports. 
They're here to back you up. That's all they're here for. They'll probably die on turn two, when a mystery goes off. If you're lucky, turn three. But your move one has to have the support. You have to funnel everything into here if you want to play this game. I will touch in on this maybe in a future video on why you absolutely have to do it this way, but just take my word for it for now that you have to funnel your power into your move one. Other three supports. You give them what you can until you finish your move one. Then you move on to your two and so forth. And I believe that touches in on all the general power things that you should be doing. Doing all your daily events, make sure you do them, do your strong approach. The grocery store is your best friend. Currently, bond scrolls are the best thing to go for. If you can get, after you get those done, it's between keys and Miyaboku. Miyaboku is good until you hit like the point where I hit where it takes so much to do then you might as well just invest it in keys but that's pretty down the line you definitely do not do refines until later until well you do your refines until level 7 and then you freeze it at level 7 and go all in at once during a rebate to push it from 7 to 10 that is how you gain power on rebates you need these rebates if you're free to play. Even if you're not free to play like me, you still want these rebates. Losing 400 advanced refines is not fun. Because if you think about it, even when they're 40% off, advanced refines are about, what was it, 18 coupons each? And you buy them by the hundreds, you're losing 400 of them, that's like a, almost, that's over $100 worth of ingots. Not cool. You don't want to lose that. <laughs> you... You absolutely have to do rebates. For low spenders, Froggy is pretty good. Um, if you can, do the 5,000. If not, do the 100. Nice rebate. Same with your weekly pack. You need those coupons when you're free to. If you're free to play, zero money. Then you should probably join a nice group where you can beef up your group skills and hopefully get a helping hand from your group members. I only say that because I only help group members. Anyone else that's not in my group doesn't get much help from me. And I will be closing out with that last statement.